Hello and welcome to another episode of Improv Sucks. My name is Nelson Velasquez. And in this episode, I'm going to be reacting to a reaction video of a stand-up comedy special put out by comedian uh, Brendan Schaub. Now, Brendan Schaub, as a comedian, is uh, a... Um, person who is in Joe Rogan's uh, circle of friends. He's a former MMA fighter, uh, doing stand-up now. Uh, he has his own podcasts. I don't really know a lot about Brendan other than I've seen him on various podcasts. And I've seen him on the Joe Rogan podcast. Um, other than that, I don't really know anything about him. I, I, I have seen uh, his special, Gringo Poppy, and um, I'm not going to be talking about the content of it per se i'm going to be talking about the review by nick is not green now, nick is not green is a youtube influencer um has uh, several different channels um and uh i've actually enjoyed a lot of his content uh but there's some of his content whenever especially when he's trying to harp on comedy that i have a really hard time watching so uh, i'm going to comment on his comments it's not meant to be a review of the actual comedy special itself uh if you do want to watch his entire review of the stand-up comedy special i'll put that in the comments below um yeah so let's get started Really tortured myself last week why there have been accusations accusations that the worst comedy special ever was recently released and the man who made that stand-up special is brendan schaub he is a former professional mma fighter turned podcast host and self-proclaimed stand-up comedian oh and he is okay, a professional got a problem with that one now self-proclaimed stand-up comedian well, he's actually going out to the clubs. He's actually touring. He's actually telling jokes. Now, whether or not you agree he's a funny stand-up comedian is a different thing, but he's not really self-proclaimed. I mean, he is a comedian. There are people who genuinely laugh at his comedy. He's actually doing the craft and, and everything that we think of a stand-up comedian does. So. Um, take a little bit of issue with that, but not a big deal. And today I don't really want to talk about all the controversies that surround Brendan Schaub outside of this special. Yes, there are women who have come forward and said that Brendan tried to hook up with them while they were in relationships with his friends and while he was in a relationship with his pregnant girlfriend at the time. I had a guy that was like, why don't you- Okay, I don't know why you're really delving into his personal life. You're bringing that up and you're painting him in a very, very negative light to start with versus being like, this is what I don't like about his comedy. You don't like him as a person, that's fine. Um, yeah, I guess you can't really separate the artist from the, the comedy here. He also threatened to take legal action against said women who talked about these situations. Yes, he is a known copyright abuser and will try to copyright anyone who says that he sucks, that he's a shitbag, that he's unfunny, that he looks like he's melting more and more every year, that he's racist, creepy, and unlikable in every aspect. And yes, he is a big proponent of free speech and anti-cancel culture. And yes, that does completely contradict his tendency to censor anybody who tries to make him look Look bad guys as i said i don't want to talk about that today i will not talk about any of that stuff today I, you won't see a single instance of me talking about that now what okay. i just did there now you're show. being disingenuous at this point you're being very disingenuous because you just spent like three minutes or four minutes talking about what you weren't going to talk about it's very trumpian in that sense of like i'm not going to say she's this i'm not going to say it right you just said it you just went into it and, and you're not talking about it in depth per se, but you brought it up. So like, that's already setting up people to already not like this dude. And again, I don't know anything about his personal life. You know, like it's not something that really, I don't check the personal lives of all the comedians I watch. If it comes up, great, but it's not something I really look into. Uh, again, I think you're being a little disingenuous on this one inspired him to try stand-up comedy So he sort of found himself plopped into this role where he tries to make people laugh And he thinks he's pretty good at it. The last special he did was about three years ago And it has 5.1 thousand reviews on IMDb with a score of 1.5 stars out of 10 So I would say he's pretty much at rock bottom right now his big comeback came about three years later when he decided to independently release a new special after network works and streaming services refuse to pick him up. The special is called Gringo Poppy. And if you're wondering, yes, Brendan Schaub is a white man who has zero ties to Mexico whatsoever, besides the fact that his wife is Mexican, of course. I say of course because about half of this special is dedicated to that single fact. The special is 25 minutes long, which is astonishingly short if you consider how fluffed this set is with stories and jokes that should ideally be about a quarter of the length that Brendan actually makes them. And the special was released admit, under the it's cool that you called out that your cat got in the shot so that's pretty dope 
a media conglomerate brand thing that Brendan owns called Thick Boy. Yep, that's how it's spelled with three C's. And also, yes, he is a 39 year old man with kids. Brendan right, called. This is a problem I've got with you saying that stuff. So you spend a lot of time talking about, um, spend a lot of time talking about how racist he is and how misogynistic he is. I'm picking up some ageist vibe from you as well. You tend to do that in a lot of your videos, talking about what you feel when you're at a certain age as to how you should be acting, what you should be doing. Um, and you do that constantly. As a 39 year old man, you're not allowed to say thick. You're not allowed to use to spell you know, misspellings and stuff like that. I think I think that's a, a bit ageist and it's a bit ignorant in general. This thick boy brand, a lifestyle choice, and a channel that will be through the eyes of the founder, Brendan Schaub. I don't know what that means. Please do not ask me what that means because I, I seriously have no idea. So as you can see, we okay. haven't watched- Again, if you're not gonna talk about well, how is that relevant to this special other than to just make this guy even more, um, in your eyes, more despicable, He's 39 years old and he's going with a thick brand and he shouldn't be doing that. Uh, again, I think it's disingenuous. I think he should, you know, with that's not relevant on the, on the comedy special. Um, yeah, keep going. This special yet? Part of that is because I really just don't want to talk about it. And the other part of it is because everything surrounding this special and the packaging and the branding is so bad that it contributes to how unfunny this thing really is. I sat down with my friend to watch this special. Does it really? Does it really? I mean, I guess. I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, if you were at the show, you wouldn't see any of that stuff. And even if you did see that stuff, like, it. Again, you're there to see the comedy. If you're there, if you're more worried about the packaging than you are worried about the actual content, then, I mean, I guess it's just a reflection on what you look for in comedy. Apparently, it's not just something that you look for uh, content-wise, but you find a lot of value in that. I disagree. I'd rather see whether or not this comedian can do the jokes, can hold a crowd. Be open on a shot of the line in front of the venue and a local Jimmy John's next door, which happens to end before we have the chance to see how short the line really is. Brendan enters stage right to this song that Thick Boy Studios okay, apparently so produced. Again, you're going down that road of like, well, you know, they cut it before and they're not allowing that portion to, to be viewed. I, how's that relevant? you could understand what was going on. The deep lyricism that he brings to the table. I'm really trying to get it. I take the L and elevate. I push it Again, past the limit. it's Don't introduction no music. You're you're complaining about his introduction music that has that has a, you know, hard hard feeling to it. Again, it's not really relevant to the stand-up act. It's intro music. Yeah, I guess if he was playing something like crazy, maybe one thing. Like, I don't know, playing a, 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 a person getting killed or something. Yeah, I guess it would influence it. But you're, you're finding more and more little tidbits so that, again, you set it up so that at the very beginning, they hate it before they even give it a shot. I don't think that's genuine. Only because they were black and questioned if the panel was the best again, possible for the job. Again, yeah, we get it. You don't like him. You think he's a horrible person. We get it. Let's talk about the comedy here. But guys, come on. Stop letting me go on these tangents. We have to stick to the special. Brendan gets on stage and is presented with a backdrop that frankly makes me sick to my stomach. I apologize to the venue that he performed at. I, I don't know if this was their choice. I assume it's the regular backdrop, but I, I have to wonder what was going on. What was going on All in their right, minds so when they- let's find out what the venue is. You're complaining about the venue. You hate the backdrop of it. And so you think for, he has control over that. So let's find out what was the venue that you shot this special at. Okay, so he shot this at the Addison Improv in Dallas, Texas. And I'm gonna guess that he has no real control over that backdrop. There's nothing he can really do about it. So you're harping on it. Okay, I guess that makes him less funny because it looks weird. Made this. Not only is the stage and the set ugly and outdated, but the directing and camera work in this special spits on any artistic integrity that is put into any comedy specials that come out today, especially for comedians that are getting as much attention as Brendan. The cameras look like network broadcasting rigs used for local TV stations, and the shots are ugly and lack any personality. He mainly uses a three camera setup with this one camera being on stage right that shows Brendan and the crowd in one shot. Now the issue with this okay, shot is so that- artistic and I don't know, I guess you have a feeling like there's an, uh, you know you're trying to tell the jokes as best you can and you're dealing with the budget that you've got so 
okay like you don't like the way it's shot that's fine i mean there's other comedy specials that i didn't enjoy that weren't shot very well i think one of uh, kevin hart's um specials i didn't really enjoy it because of how badly it was shot so i'll give it to you there the audience is so in the dark that in order to make them visible they have to completely overexpose brendan's face leaving him with this white mask of pure energy that hides any semblance of what once was on that big fat ugly head of his the shot see, also shows uh, that see, like the that, i mean there you go like you obviously don't like him again he has no control over that so like the the room is dark so what were they supposed to do like they probably don't have control over how to shoot that room and they're limited with the cameras that they've got so they did the best they could i think this is something done to harp on drop just seems to end under brendan's waist which makes it look even worse than it did before i don't want to like rail too much on uh, you know the background that someone else may have created see, but if see, you're again disingenuous you spent a good minute at least talking about it and it's obvious you don't like it and then you say i don't really want to talk about it you just spent a whole bunch of time talking about it brendan tries to be a real comedian multiple times by working the audience into his set in an organic way uh, but it often falls flat because it's so obvious that he plants these jokes into his set to seem more organic but they really come off as corny and insincere for example he has this joke in his set about an anti-vaxxer in the crowd who is super against getting vaccinated now don't be fooled he isn't against this guy in any way he makes it very clear that he is not for mandatory vaccinations but he'll usually do this thing where he just points at a random person in the crowd who might kind of fit the joke that he wants to tell and then he'll act like he just improv it out of nowhere i love it i love it there's always one guy. No fucking way, bro! <laughs> Alright, I don't find anything wrong with that. There's, I don't find anything wrong with that. There, there are plenty of times where you've set up the joke and you want to uh, ha have an act out like that and you plant it. And whether or not the audience re responds well to it, you go to that material. So this is standard comedian stuff now. You know whether or not it's improvised or off the cuff i guess it's up to you you're you again you're biased right to say hey i don't like this guy and this is just corny as shit but for me watching it i'm kind of like yeah like that is something that absolutely i've seen plenty of comedians do so not out of norm that needle's not touching this fucking temple daddy <laughs> The crazy thing is that this pre-written fake improv joke isn't even funny. But then he continues the joke why? by just coming up with a very why why isn't it funny? That I, I wish you had said why it wasn't funny. And I just don't really understand what the joke is exactly. It's obvious that the guy wasn't eating nachos when he mentioned the nachos joke. He was just like, "Oh, and and what if he was eating nachos?" <laughs> As he says, he's taking a nacho, dipping in nacho cheese. The... <laughs> I can explain oh, my... the joke. <laughs> That's right. So the line, and so first of all, for all us, you, Nick, me, Nelson, trying to explain a joke, doesn't make it any funnier. But you ask the question. You don't know why it's funny. This is why it's funny. The guy, the line right before was, "No way, I'm not going to let a needle touch this temple." Meaning that this guy treats his body like a temple, meaning that he probably works out. And he probably takes care of himself and watches what he eats and all that stuff. And so the part of the joke is that, oh, it's so much of a temple. This dude is in the back eating nacho cheese, getting fat off of it. That's the joke, right? So he's being a hypocrite and he's calling him out on it. That Mr. Whole Foods, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to do, man. I was... And then, hey, what does Mr. Whole Foods mean? Is the joke that okay, he would again, hype it? you missed the first part of the joke, right? That's the first part of the joke. He's like, yeah, Mr. Whole Foods. Like, yeah, if his body is a temple, he's eating well. And there's, there is a, a lot of people who go shopping at Whole Foods have this air that they're healthier because they're shopping at a, at a very, very, uh, you know, organic place and, and they're getting better, better groceries than other people, right? So it just goes in with the whole my body's a temple joke. That ex be eating nachos and nachos are bought from a grocery store and the name of a popular grocery store is whole foods maybe i maybe it's going completely over it my head but i just i'm head. 
Absolutely. It, it, I'm, you missed a joke. I realize my girl's not cool. She's just not, she's not a friendly human being. I, uh, I married a goddamn rattlesnake. <laughs> she's like, this is my girl. This is my girl, man. This is what I'm dealing with. There's nothing that is going to age worse than a comedy routine about hating quarantine with your wife. And then we get to the part of the special where Brendan oh. starts telling stories about- Okay, dude, like, I think that's the other thing that like, you're way, from what I can tell, you're not married. I think you have a girlfriend. Like, you don't live with anybody, you live by yourself. Like, you don't have that life experience that's so very hard for you to relate with. He may love his wife up and down, but he might talk shit anyway. Again, I don't see this as being anything from a craft perspective going outside the norm. You might, you know, it, it could be a, a sensationalized or an exaggerated uh, um, version of the life that you think you're leading. That you will do it i might say some hateful shit about my uh significant other uh, but i don't actually mean it i just i say it because i know it'll elicit a laugh right and you know i guess there's truth in comedy is always best i guess but you know it's not beyond there's lots of things i've heard lots of comedians say again doing the craft that it, it, it allows a lot for exaggeration he also makes this joke about eating so much Mexican food that they would be built like armadillos. I've never been thicker since I got with a Mexican, man. We never tailor off the carbs? That's the game plan? We're just all gonna be built like armadillos? <laughs> what the hell does that mean? No, okay, I, I'm serious. So I'm gonna explain this joke for you. So, uh, if you've ever seen, like, number one, he's in Texas. Texans, te the armadillo is like a state pet. <laughs> for you know everyone knows what an armadillo does right so or what an armadillo looks like uh so again let's talk about all carbs based on the food that he's eating he's eating it up and he makes an illusion that like hey are we all trying to look like armadillos that's the joke right we all know what I, what armadillos look like right so they we relate with and it's a weird animal to start with let alone to compare yourself to that's where the, the comedy comes from. Again, is it the greatest joke? Not really, but I see where he's going with it. Wait, what does that mean? Much of what Brendan says in his jokes just boil down to, oh, I said it in a funny voice, so that means it's funny. Because of Kyle. <laughs> And he does the same thing often with physical humor as well. Hey, Dad, I got that Johnson Johnson, bro. I don't feel good, bro. See, I think, I think this is where, again, you don't have a really good, like, really good appreciation for that part of it, like the physicality and the, in the intonation. Now, I agree with you. I agree that his, his Mexican, you know, uh, his Mexican voices are not very good. However, this is just him not being very well polished with it. And not really have a good understanding of where he's going with some of these uh, voices. And he could just spend more time from an actor's perspective, learning more about characterization. So is Brendan Schaub's gringo poppy as bad as everyone is saying it is? Well, first we have to look at the fact that yes, yeah, it was that bad. I had to take five showers after I watched this special and I still felt the grease that this little slime ball spewed onto me when I listened to him talk for 25 minutes straight. Now it's unfortunate that there are so many struggling stand-up comedians who are genuinely hilarious, inventive, and are changing the world of stand-up comedy. And people like Brendan Schaub are able to make a living doing this shit. Now I'm no well, avid stand-up. Well, I mean, the same could be said of just about anybody. I mean, I'm sure people come at you and they're like, ah, you know, this guy, he got put on because of this other thing and he's not talented and I should be in his place doing this type of thing. I mean, we all have people that we adhere to or, or that we look up to or that we, we all admire or think that there are a lot better people for. It, it's part of the game. It's part of what it is we do. Right place, right time, right connections. It is not a meritocracy. It never has been meritocracy. You should know that above anything else, right? You shitting on this stand-up comic is you, you know, it's not because you're necessarily funny or you're pointing something out that's that absolutely is novel is that you're taking advantage of it. So right place, right time. So, yeah. All right, so I think that Nick points out some of the lazier jokes and some of the, some of the just not funny content and he's, allowed to have his opinion but i think the fact is is that nick is going at it from the perspective of trying to diss this guy 
trying to be trying to do his thing as a comedian and he constantly goes after comedians or people that he doesn't find funny and he doesn't understand some of the jokes and he tries to fashion things in such a way that if he doesn't get it it must not be funny and it's like you know i pointed out a couple times already like dude just because you didn't get it doesn't mean it's not funny right it means that you missed a joke right plenty of times i've missed a joke I didn't understand it and found out, oh, you know, in hindsight, that was actually kind of funny at that point. Also, implore you, Nick, I'd love to see you try to do some stand-up comedy. I think that would be a very, very interesting journey for you. Uh, I'd love to see you try to do it for six months straight and try hitting an open mic every single week, writing material, trying out in front of people, finding out what your comedic voice truly is. I think you'd come up with an appreciation for what it is that other people do and understand their craft and what they put into it. Not everybody does absolutely, um, you know, truthful, uh, everything is real, um, is able to, uh, able to suspend your disbelief kind of comedy. Not everybody does it. Not everybody does it well. And apparently, you know, um, Brenda doesn't do a good job of it for you, understood, but... I, I don't feel like you have an appreciation for the craft and that's why I find this analysis a bit offensive is not probably too strong a word I find this analysis of what it is a comedians do a little bit um, ignorant that's really the best way of putting it I think you need to go back you need to go do some stand-up comedy and then come back and talk at that point I think then you'll have a leg to stand up on Anyway, if you liked this video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. I've been your host, Nelson Velasquez, and thank you for watching.